All right, uh, let's start over. Welcome everyone. And now we're recording this session, our fourth one on how to be a cadet. And we have our director of cadet leadership and development joining us today, but he's gonna have to wait a few minutes before I finish my uh, opening remarks about, um, about orientation move-in day, which is August uh, 17th. Uh, as you all know, you will be uh, receiving an email from housing. It should be happening any day now. Uh, these emails will go to your students and um, they will be given a time slot. They will You will be requested to arrive on campus uh, for that uh, time slot. A few minutes early would be wonderful. Uh, you'll be directed to park in par parking lot O. It's the first thing that you see when you come on to Maritime um, Academy Drive. From there, you will walk over to our PIAC, which is Physical Education and Aquatic Center Building. We'll be uh, ready with bells and whistles to uh, greet you and welcome you. And uh, we'll quickly check your student in and be guiding them into the large gym where they'll pick up their uniform, their initial issue. Uh, while we will request the families to meet some of the people you'll have seen on screen. Um, and for those of the families who've not been able to join us on, um, on these virtual sessions, we'll get a chance to meet um, key service providers on campus and ask any questions while your student is picking up um, while your student is picking up their uniform. Once they've got their uniform bag, um, you will go right back to your car, put the bag in the car, put your student in the car, drive up to the res hall. Um, if your student has been placed in McAllister, um, McAllister is one of our newer halls and it has a large parking lot in front of it. So things could be a little bit easier there. You'll be able to drive up and um, park in that parking lot uh, while your student is helped by our orientation leaders and taken inside the, the room to get settled, inside the building to get settled. Those who are going to be in upper res hall, which is majority of our students, um, you will be driving up a slight hill um, where you'll have just enough space to turn around. You'll make a U-turn and uh, open your car doors. And uh, our again, our student helpers will help get you um, out of your car and your belongings out of your car, all except the driver. Um, and they will be um, helped along to get into the student's room while the driver takes the car back down, parks, and then you'll have an opportunity to come back up or meet up your family, depending on what plans you make. Uh, we'll have a shuttle that be running between lot O, other parking lots, and um, upper res hall. So they, you know, you could catch that shuttle and make it back to the res hall. Uh, you will be able to park anywhere after you've dropped your kid or your student uh, at the res hall. You will be able to park in lot A, B, C is very small, but D and uh, or back in O, depending on how uh, where where spaces are available. Also, uh, wear, please wear comfortable shoes, dress in layers so that um, you're comfortable throughout your stay. Mornings are cool, afternoons get hot, and evenings are back being pretty cool and breezy. Um, once you're done with your student's room, you'll have a window of time up until about three o'clock where before you meet with leadership and we'll have a bit of a welcome for you. Um, for the families and um, our director for CLD will be getting your students ready on how to how to get into formation and preparing them for the capping ceremony. Uh, capping ceremony will uh, take about 15 or so minutes. And after that, you'll have time to go back to PIAC if you wanna change out any of your uniform sizes. And if not, uh, you'll have an opportunity to eat dinner or get a um, or get a finish any uh, errands that you might have uh, found that you needed to do. Um, once that all is done, you will deliver your student back to us uh, at 630. They have floor meetings and the following three days are going to be very busy for them. We have planned out a 
full day schedule every day for them until they start classes on the 21st. Uh, I did get a few emails and calls uh, asking if your student uh, could leave campus on those days. And the answer is mm, no, please do not um, make other plans. Your student will have a full day. And uh, even though the evenings are a little bit more flexible and they might have some time, that's their chance to make friends and get ready for the school year. So we highly recommend that you do not pull your student out in the evening, even though it is a flexible and more opening uh, open time for them. So Jason, two more minutes. I have still something else to say. Um, um, I have received a lot of questions about registration. I just want everyone to know that the first semester students are gonna get block registered. So we're in the process of evaluating transcripts and getting things ready. And we will register your student in a full course load based on their transcripts, whether they are, those are from high schools or community college, any transfer credits, AP credits, all of that stuff is being put in our, our uh, system. And uh, we will know what courses they're going to, is going to best fit their roadmap uh, or their guide for the rest of their four years here. We'll register them so your student will know that they're taking their English class at 815 and when they get that schedule they might decide 815 is not good for me I want to take the 415 you uh, four o'clock class and they'll have that chance during orientation and the first week of classes to make those kind of adjustments um, so hang tight they'll be block registered once they're block registered that's when um Accounting will know what the tuition fee is going to be. And based on that, they will disseminate the bills uh, for tuition, lodge and board and uh, all the other fees, all of that. They'll prepare those once that registration process is complete. The timeline for that completion, it started yesterday and it goes until August 10. As we register, we are reaching out to students to say, you've been registered and here's your billing. So hang tight. Those are coming. The the due date for bills typically has been August 1. And this year, because of all the FAFSA changes and things falling behind uh, on, on with our schedule, uh, that's been shifted to August 16th. So worry not, there's no late fees. And uh, we've moved the deadline to August 16, which is six days after the last of the uh, block registration and, and notification to go out. Um, with that, please keep your um, devices on mute for me um, and um, please put in your questions in chat. Um, presenters, please do not attempt to answer these questions in chat. We will, I will uh, field them to you uh, towards the end um, after you finish your presentation and you can answer them to everyone verbally. And uh, in the last five or seven minutes, we'll go ahead and open it up for, for our attendees today, parents, families today to ask their questions verbally. We had hoped that our captain, Captain Bannister from TSGB would be able to join us. Uh, TSGB stands for Training Ship Golden Bear. But as I look through all the folks who are on the call, I don't see her. Uh, they are The ship is docked in uh, Los Angeles right now. It arrived today. Uh, and surely she's uh, busy with that. And that's probably uh, precluded her from being able to join us. That's everything that I had to start off with. So with that, um, I'm going to give the floor to our CLD, Cadet Leadership and Development Director, Jason. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, hello, everyone. I, I'm Jay Harkum. I'm brand new here, uh, going on my third week here at Cal Maritime. So I'm learning uh, a lot as I go. But one thing is I'm super excited to work with your students um, once they do arrive here on campus. So um, just a little bit about our office. You know, we are, are here to uh, support the core cadets and really the magic comes from the students. So we have over 50 uh, student leaders uh, that are part of the core leader team um, that will really help run the everyday function uh, of the core cadets. And one thing that we're really going to focus on uh, moving into this year is not just having formation 
um, and focusing on inspections as well as grooming, but we really want to foster the opportunity for student development for all, uh, for everyone that's in the Corps of Cadets. So we're really going to be focusing on um, uh, divisional uh, challenges, uh, team cohesion, and, uh, and a lot of different um, opportunities for the cadets. Um, so just a little bit about my background. I'm coming, uh, most recently, I'm coming from San Francisco State University, where I ran their outdoor program uh, for almost four years. So Hopefully we're looking to bring a lot of that opportunity um, and those ideas to Cal Maritime. Um, I've got a lot of experience uh, with expeditionary program, Outward Bound and Knowles, you may be familiar with. Um, I really think that the Outward Bound model can be applied. Um, similar uh, aspects of it can be applied here at Cal Maritime. So uh, really we have a good team. Uh, we have Natalia, she's our admin assistant. She's not here tonight, but we do have Craig on the call. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Craig to introduce himself. And thank you so much for joining us. I much appreciate it. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, as Jay said, my name is Craig Henneke. I am a, I've been at Cal Maritime about two years, a little over two years. Uh, I'm a company officer within cadet leadership and development. I have degrees in psychology and um, my role is, is to help foster and mentor our leadership program. And, and our cadets in everything they do. So our office has a role in almost all aspects of a cadet's life. And what we try to do is just feed them resources as needed in terms of helping them thrive and helping them grow. And we are troubleshooters. We, we know everybody on campus and we try to keep our, keep our ears and eyes open to all issues on campus. So we're, we're always around your students and um, it's been real rewarding for, uh, for, for me over the past two, two plus years. So thank you. Did we lose Jason? Oh, there you are. So, uh, these are, um, families as uh, Jason and Craig, is there Anything that you can share with them with regard to your interactions with students, uh, especially cadets, what what does a cadet do um, and and how, what role do you play in that? I'm sorry, Craig, I'll, I'll tackle this uh, first. So again, I've only been here going on three weeks, but really the cadets, they're, they're the leaders of our campus. They pretty much run the daily uh, functions of, of everything we do, um, but being specifically in the core of cadets, uh, it's definitely not always going to be easy. Uh, there's definitely challenges, you know, waking up early, going to formation, uh, holding yourself to high standards, professionalism, grooming, uh, wearing a uniform, um, which creates that sense of belonging. So there's definitely challenges, but really it's it's our core leaders. Um, like I'm going I'm to use the word again, that, that that's the magic behind it, every, everything that happens here on campus. Um, and that's really what the traineeship Golden Bear is all about. The students are out there not only learning, but they're actually learning by doing, right? That experiential education piece. So that's really what the core is about. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think Craig will be able to go into a little bit more detail about how it's structured. But basically, you know, as a brand new cadet here on campus, uh, you know, the goal is for them to learn, right? To learn. And then eventually as they grow, they're going to take on more responsibilities and they're going to, they're going to be looking after um, the incoming cadets, right? So if you have a student coming in uh, as a first year student, they're going to have mentors, you know, the sophomores, uh, third years and seniors, they're going to help look after them uh, and help them grow. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for that peer mentorship um, as well as student development um, within the core cadet. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Craig. I think you can probably describe the structure a little bit better and, and a little bit more information. Sure. Thanks, Jay. The structure of the Corps of Cadets starts with an executive team um, of leaders, and those three uh, oversee the whole Corps of Cadets. And then below them, we have what we call company officers, and there are three companies. And those companies uh, are made up of maritime um Transportation or MT, what we call DECIs, and then there's the engine company and what we call MPM, which is Maritime Policy Management. So those are the three schools at the Maritime Academy, if you will, and the three companies that fall within the core of cadets. And then each of those schools has company officers that are ranked company commander, 
executive officer and ops officer. And then below them, there are division uh, leadership. So that's why we have, like Jay was saying, we have 50 different leadership positions within the Corps of Cadets. So <clears throat> when I when Jay was talking about the structure, that's sort of how it falls out. Our role as uh, cadet leadership and development uh, really is just about everything having to do with the cadet's life, um, including their conduct. We try and teach professionalism. We try and teach leadership. That's our main goal is, is leadership and, and professionalism, putting out the best, uh, the best uh, people in the, in the industry, the, the best leaders, the, the smartest, the fastest to, to, to react. Uh, and those students who, who really are pushing themselves in this program do really well in, in the maritime industry, engineering and shoreside with marine, uh, or excuse me, with uh, maritime policy management. Yeah. Uh, anything else I can add? Vanita, can you think of anything? Um, I was going to ask permission if I could uh, mention a couple other things. Absolutely. Um, thank you. So uh, as a cadet, uh, we do have the core that kind of helps as uh, as Craig mentioned, to structure uh, students with discipline and professionalism and um, response times and all of that good stuff. But in addition to that, one other piece that is part of their curriculum and is managed through this core is watch standing. So watch standing is a piece, uh, a curriculum piece that works towards getting a licensure. So all the students in the core must stand watch at the ship and that time um, and and this office manages uh, the scheduling of those watches and uh, manages uh, the completion of that watch time in a satisfactory uh, in a satisfactory uh, manner um, and that like I said works towards licensure that's another big piece of what this department does um, we are so accustomed to calling it the commandant's office, but um, we'll, we're learning to call it the CLD office. In addition to that, um, one other piece that ap applies to beyond the core, uh, and I'll explain that in just a second, is a very specific leadership program. It's called the Edwards Leadership Program, Leadership and Development Program, ELDP for short. We love our acronyms. Um, and that is a program that is get, gonna get overhauled by the new CLD director. And we will have, uh, he has a few more days, weeks to uh, have that program ready to be able to uh, implement when the students are here, your students are here and the returning students are here. So we're wor working behind the scenes to get that ready, but that's another part of this department. So these three major things, the structure of the core and how they support each other uh, within the core, what the staff does for the student, for the rest of the students, um, the watch standing piece and ELDP. Um, I'll go back and kind of explain what, when I said it, ELDP is for our core and beyond. Uh, this is the first year that we have uh, provided our students who are not in the licensure programs to actually opt into the core if they so choose. Should they choose not to opt into the core, uh, they will no longer need to uh, come to formation. They will not have any specific watch standing uh, responsibilities and they will not be issued a full um, uniform bag or uh, initial issue which has your khakis and your salt and pepper, the formal uniform that you see maritime officers wearing, uh, coveralls and overalls and all of those other things, they will have a much smaller issue uh, of uniforms, which is going to be a polo shirt and a jacket, uh, which they can pair with either khaki, tan or black pants, and their footwear is going to be um, open, whatever they wish to choose. Uh, students for families who are here with students who are joining us for our international business logistics program, uh, as well as our international strategy and security program, ISS. So IBL and ISS students will be, uh, will have the option to join the core or not. 
those who don't join the core will not have those additional uh, pieces in their everyday life. However, they will have the opportunity to work with um, uh, at least Jason, I'm sure Craig will help out as well with the uh, with the ELDP program. So any leadership program that uh, Jason puts together, uh, the students who are not opting in will have access to it. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going off topic a little bit please forgive me. Um, in addition to that, they have other leadership opportunities. Our housing um, folks uh, are, are uh, building a leadership team called, and they're called uh, resident assistants. We have within our student body, we have um, those of you who met Josie um, uh, in, in one of our uh, previous calls, We'll have associated student body officers that get uh, elected or appointed. Uh, and in addition to that, athletes form another leadership group where they um, it's called a student athlete council. And so if your student is an athlete, uh, they are able to participate in some leadership roles there. So uh, core leadership or core staff is not the only opportunity for leadership roles on, on campus. There are these other uh, other groups that have uh, opportunities as well. Did I miss anything? I think you're good. Thank okay. You. Um, if you would wish to add anything else that relates to how to be a cadet, um, uh, this is your chance. And after that, I will go ahead and start reading questions that you can uh, you can answer. Anything else? I would just add one more thing, Benita, and that's uh, a role in, in the conduct on campus and and, and how we, uh, that's that's a, a big part of our office is, is dealing with um, the conduct of cadets. They are expected to um, hold themselves in a higher manner than than most college students. They, they represent the university. They represent the Corps of Cadets. And they're expected to to maintain a high standard of, of decorum and um, of behavior. And along with that, uh, that, that sort of pushes that professionalism I was talking about. It also, uh, along with that professionalism, is accountability. That's another big role that our office plays. Um, so making sure you're on time, making sure you're prepared, making sure that you have everything you need when you're supposed to be there. And if... There's an old saying, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, then you're on time. And that's sort of what we push out there to our students. And I think I think that's all I wanted to cover, but I, I might come up with more. <laughs> you're most welcome to, to chime in when you do. Um, just building on that conduct. So as in all educational institutions, students have to abide by a a uh, student handbook or a set of, uh, you know, rules or guidance. And when students do not adhere to those uh, rules and regulations or, or policies, um, there is a conduct uh, and, and um, restorative justice process that the school follows. Same here. Uh, with the with the additional responsibility on on cadets being that if they um, violate a, a policy or a reg rule or regulation, uh, they have to go through the conduct process, but they also will be levied what we call demerits. Um, so let's say if there's a student smoking on campus, we're a no smoking campus, uh, and the conduct process is that you go through uh, the dean of students and there is whatever process they follow. In the handbook, it'll also say if you're found responsible for smoking on a no sp smoking campus, uh, we will levy you with, let's say, 50 demerits. And those demerits accumulate. And um, if you accumulate more than or at 75, you are at risk of suspension. Um, do we suspend everyone who reaches 75? No, but you do uh, get to that risky point. For the whole time that you're on campus, on our campus, uh, you cannot exceed 350. Uh, you cannot exceed 125 in a year. So there are some of these additional responsibilities that students um, that students 
have to um, have to kind of work with if they're going to be part of the core. Um, I will, it looks like some questions are piling up. If, if you don't have anything to add to that, I would love to start reading the questions. Let's go with the questions. Okay. Um, what leadership theory guides you and your role in teaching leadership in this program is the first one. Great. No, that's a fantastic question. Um, and I'm not going to have an exact answer for you for that, but I think, um, you know, just from my time working with students of the years at the different universities um, in different leadership positions, I think applying, um, applying uh, those skill sets uh, to here at Cal Maritime would be very beneficial. But really, I think when you look at, you know, the maritime industry, right, the students, yes, they're learning how to, whether they go out to operate ships or work in the engine room, they're learning these technical skills. But one thing we really want to focus on is that character development. We want to focus on uh, something as simple as communication or, um, you know, other attri attributes of leadership rather than just focusing on the technical skills. So I think that's uh, the opportunity we have as, as part of the core cadets is we have we have the time uh, a few days a week where we have 700 plus students, uh, all part of the core cadets right in front of us. And then we can take these opportunities uh, to work on uh, character development and different leadership skills um, with the students as we move forward. So I think that's the model we're approaching. And as I mentioned before, my background is heavily focused on outdoor rec recreation, outdoor education. You know, I've spent 80 days uh, on canoes, uh, going through the Everglades, sleeping on the platform. So not necessarily time in a ship, but very similar, you know, working in a tight space where where your your room, your platform of the canoes is, is a kitchen and it's the, uh, it's the bedroom. It is um, you know, it's it, the rooms change throughout the day, and you have to learn to be able to work with each other. You have to be able to uh, how do you resolve conflict, uh, you know, resolution and different things like that. So I think those are the skills that we are going to really try to focus on with the with the cadets at first, um, and then we can build off of that. And I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, um, but you know, uh, that's something we'll figure out um, as we start working with the cadets. Um, so that's my take uh, on the leadership part. Uh, was there a second part to that question, Benita? Um, no, the second question does. There is another one by by uh, Rochelle that, that mm -hmm. is, how do you handle racism and sexism within the core? Yeah, and that's and that's that's definitely tough. It's a tough question, and I think um, really you need to we need to approach it with a with a zero tolerance, right? So the core cadets. I know one of my goals is a uh, brand new coming into this position, and my team, our team that we've talked with, uh, we really want to create that sense of belonging. Um, and everybody comes from different backgrounds and different cultures. And I think it's going to be really important uh, from day one, setting that high expectation uh, and, and really letting uh, folks know that we do have zero tolerance for, uh, for any, anything uh, of that nature. And if something like that does happen, uh, we'll definitely um, have to take appropriate avenues to, to resolve such an issue. I do know that the university, um, well before I, I have gotten here, has has been working on a, a lot of different initiatives, like they have an inclusion center now um, and they have a community day. So there's a lot of different resources here on campus um, uh, that have uh, been initiated um, and being built upon. So within the core cadets, we're definitely going to rely on the resources we have um, uh, and approach it that way. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, may I add uh, something to that uh, that you touched on, Jason? Yes, please. Um, so we do have a director for inclusion initiatives uh, now. And one of the things that um, Jason has mentioned uh, that he's going to plan uh, training for the core staff, the, the leaders, uh, on a regular basis throughout the year. And um, I, I know, I wish Megan was here to speak about uh, her plans to work closely with your office um, it, when you plan those trainings. So she can be invited as a speaker or a presenter or a, uh, or a facilitator. So those topics are touched on and are uh, made mainstream uh, in conversation. So I know Megan uh, had that plan and mm -hmm. we were looking forward to your arrival and your plan to um, get our, our staff trained or your staff trained. 
Um, Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Because you know, we're only we're really only as good as our as our core leadership, right? Our core leaders. So there's a um, you know our goal this year is to put a lot of time into our student leaders and help develop them because um, really they're the ones running the core cadets and. Um, and again, we're only as good as our leaders. So we're going to spend a lot of time, one-on-one -on -one meetings, monthly meetings, uh, a lot of training um, to get our cadets up to, um, to a high standard because it, everything trickles down. Um, so we definitely want to be a unified front, but we want to be fair, consistent. So I think that's all important. Um, and then those, those are some baseline goals that we're going to be uh, shooting for every single day. So, Thank you. Um, next one is when will we know what division or company we will be placed in uh, and how do we get involved with the leadership in core of cadets? Craig, would you go to answer that one as far as how they're assigned? I, I think we need a full roster before we can start placing people into uh, divisions. So that answer is still up in the air. But if I can go back one question and, and touch on uh, the racism and sexism. We are proactive. I just want to say in everything that we do, we have WIML, which is Women in Maritime Leadership that Benita puts on for our school and for, for uh, the six other maritime academies. We also have Embark. And I was going to also mention our Inclusion and Diversity Center as well. So we are very proactive when it comes to those type of things. And we do have a zero tolerance for any any type of sexism or racism within the Corps of Cadets. It just isn't, not acceptable. Thank you. Um, I know that divisions um, have been um, as assigned to students. Um, the question is, when will we let you know? And um, I don't have that answer. And Jason being so new and Craig just coming back after uh, a vacation may not have that information. So why don't we uh, go ahead and work on that and have that answer to me so I can share it with folks next week. Um, how do we get involved with leadership in the Corps of Cadets? Well, I could take that one. It's as simple as putting your foot in the ring. That's it. Just making yourself seen, um, leading by example, first of all. It's it's um, it's a little more challenging your first semester because you're getting your feet wet. But after that, uh, you'll start to get noticed uh, as a leader. And and then you just put your name in. And we go through interview processes um, in order to pick our uh, executive staff, our company staff, and our division staff. So there are processes to go along with that. And there, leadership comes in all, all shapes and sizes because our RAs, what you may know as RHOs, those are residence assistants or resident hall officers. Those are also uh, leaders within campus. We have peer leaders, uh, peer health leaders. We have uh, ASCMA, which is Associated Students Leaders. We have uh, uh, Council of Cadet Athlete Leaders. Uh, the list goes on and on. So there are many, many opportunities for leadership. It's just a matter of you making the choice to want to step into that role. Thank you, Craig. Um, in just a second, I will go ahead and share the link of, uh, from our website where you can find the information on how to apply and uh, for a cadet uh, for a core cadet uh, leadership position. Um, can a freshman become a resident assistant? Uh, no, you have to wait till your sophomore year, know what's going on and, and apply. All the um, cadet, um, sorry, all the resident assistants are already hired for this year. Um, so coming in the process already complete. Uh, not really a question, but I toured um, Golden Bear today and got to say that these young men and women are so well spoken. Oh, thank you, Angra. That's uh, what we do every day. And if, those are the kinds of things that we work towards. So appreciate that. Um, how does a student apply to Cadet Corps, I just answered that. Um, if they are an IBL or ISS student. So all IBL, IBL and ISS students had the opportunity to opt into the core. If your student has done that and wanted that extra responsibility of uh, watches and uh, formation and being in uniform and held to that standard um, of professionalism and, and take the risk of getting demerits, uh, 
an extra duty if they stepped out of line, if they they chose to do that, if they opted in, uh, they'll be uh, they'll have an opportunity to start looking at uh, Cora Cadet opportunities. If they chose not to do that and you are not aware of it, um, they can make that choice again the following year. Um, will cadets receive a copy of the handbook at orientation or do they need to purchase it elsewhere? Uh, could I answer that one? Absolutely. So uh, we are, uh, because of some of the changes with regard to opt-in um, and the costs of printing and the environmental impact of printing uh, handbooks, we are going digital for, um, for the student handbook that applies to everyone and then a supplemental um, set of rules and regulations that apply only to the core. Both those documents are have been created as a course in Canvas, which is the platform that your students will use for all their courses. Um, and that link to the course will be sent to them until the uh, probably um, early next week. And they'll have access to the entire uh, document. They'll read it, they'll uh, digest it. And at the end of it, they have to acknowledge that they have received read and they understand uh, what the expectations are. Um, we're no longer printing copies of it. And then probably uh, before they arrive on campus, by then we will have created a PDF of that information and put, put that information in PDF form on our website for anyone like yourself to see like, what is my kid really being held responsible for? And what are the policies and what uh, are the expectations? Uh, that'll probably be uh, mid to late August when that document will become available on our website. Um, can you tell us more about the SWIM assessment? Um, sure. Um, up until last year, every student who came to campus um, had to be assessed for their swimming skills. And if they did not pass it for any reason, they would uh, automatically be enrolled in a course. It's a one unit course that would give them the entire semester to learn and then get assessed to pass. Uh, however, with the opt-in program that has changed, uh, only students who are um, going to be in the, in uh, who are going to be in majors, licensure majors will have to be assessed as well as oceanography because those are the students who are going on boats. So as an ISSA, ISS or GSMA, um, which was the older name, an IBL student, you will not need to be uh, taking the swim assessment. It's a good 15 minute uh, assessment. You are required to do six or seven different uh, strokes and um, be able to uh, demonstrate some endurance, which is pretty basic. If you go ahead on our website and uh, do a key search for swim assessment, you'll get the details. And although I've been here a while, I haven't committed to memory exactly what all that is, but it's it's pretty basic and you can find it on our website. Um, does prior leadership training, such as being an NYLT space BS, BSA scout or Eagle rank, they uh, play a role in determining who might get extra responsibilities sooner. That's one for Jason or Craig. I can answer that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what that first one was, but definitely if, if a student coming in um, has experience with leadership, uh, whether that be in high school or a private institution or just an extracurricular activity, I think all that definitely stands out and will definitely help. Because again, uh, I'm going to keep saying this. Uh, our students are the our, our student leaders. They're the magic of our program, right? So our student leaders, uh, the more attributes that they can bring in and build a share amongst each other, it's just going to make us stronger as a team, and it's going to be better. But you know, to answer your question, absolutely, um, I think it'd be very beneficial. Um, Robin, being in the core, um, it, is she saying she's never heard that that phrase before? So how does how do they know if they opted in? Um, may I take this one? Yes, please. Um, so depending on your student's major. So if you your student is an ME, 
FET, MET, MT, they are automatically part of the core because they're working towards a licensure. They have to be in uniform. They have to do formation. They have to do watch. And those, those so any engineering major and the maritime transportation major, you're automatically in the core. The other folks like oceanography, oh, uh, uh, like oceanography, ISS and IBL, you had to opt in and your students received multiple reminders via uh, in, to their email box, see some email saying, tell us, are you opting in or you're staying in as a traditional student? And they had to have made uh, that decision. Uh, of all the incoming class who had that option, um, I think there are 14 students who didn't respond yet. And our admissions office is working with those 14 students to say, hey, we'd give us an answer. Um, but for the most part, those who needed to make that de decision uh, have done so. They've opted in or chosen to opt out. And we already have those decisions from your students. So check with your student where they are. Um, so Lisa says, since students are initially assigned to a division, can students change division if they prefer to be placed in a different one? Craig? Craig, I'm gonna give that to you. Yeah, I think it's I think it's possible. Uh, I, we've done it in the past. The short answer is yes. Um, for cause, if they have a reason uh, for changing the division, often some students will ask, can we be put in a different division? Because that's what my dad was and that's what my uncle was. And I want to be a 2D because everyone in my family has been a 2D and that's always possible to do. Um, but if there is some other cause, it may need to be addressed and not just change divisions. So depending on what the reasons are, we will definitely consider that. Uh, can uh, Where can we access a recording of this meeting? Uh, so if you go to, uh, I'll put the link in. It's, it's easier for me to just put the link in. Here we go. That's where you'll find the recording. Give us a few days. It takes a few days for uh, me to get the recording from Zoom and then for our folks on campus to actually uh, plant it there. Um, can you explain what you mean by divisions? I'll take this one. Mm -hmm. uh, divisions are, uh, there are four divisions within each company. So as I was saying, we have three schools. Each school has uh, four divisions within it. So there's, as Benita was just saying, 2D, that means two decky. So that there's 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D. There's one E, which is engine, two E, three E, four E. And then there's one M, two, four, one through four M, which is maritime policy management. So those are the way it's broken down into its finest individual groups within the Corps of Cadets. So if, I hope that makes sense. And and I, I don't know how many people are in a, in a division, but um, there's a bunch, probably... 50, 60 people in a division, something like that. And, and that's how it's broken down. Does that, I hope that answers your question. Um, I do need, <laughs> I do need to end this call at 630 today. Um, so if there are any, um, any of our attendees who want to unmute and ask a question because they were not able to type it in for any reason, um, let's do that. And then if Jason and Craig are, um, if Jason and Craig are good with you guys asking me questions on other topics, um, I can field those as well. Uh, an update on parking permits. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but I found out that any emails that you send to folks, uh, to our uh, to our parking folks, uh, those emails are answered on Mondays and Fridays. So if you send an email late Monday or Tuesday, you have to wait a few days before uh, they are being uh, responded to. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Um, keep that in mind um, for parking permits. But yes, all incoming students can apply uh, and um, our PD will review it and most likely uh, give you uh, the okay to get a parking permit through the cashier's office and you can pay the money for the permit on CashNet. I hope that answers your question. And I will go back to... Um, our, our cadet leadership and development question, is there any academic benefit to being in a leadership position? Who wants to take that? I can take it. Um, so you're specifically asking if there's an academic benefit. Um, so I, I, I can, well, I'm gonna speak on it this way. I think just so imagine the core cadets, 700 students, right? And your, your student is now a leader within the Corps of Cadets. So now they're working to oversee uh, 700 other individuals uh, dealing with different personalities, dealing with conflict. Um, but they're doing it um, in, a, in a vehicle uh, where they're, they're being provided resources uh, and given the opportunity to lead, empowered to lead, but also with the opportunity to fail, but learn from that in a safe place. So I think... Um, having that opportunity, you know, to put on your resume and experience, you know, these students are hopefully going to graduate from Cal Maritime and go out and be in the maritime industry or whatever industry they end up being in. And we want them to be future leaders, right? And whatever workplace they go into, they're going to have to deal with working on uh, working together as a team. And as you know, in the world, communication, right, that's always a struggle. So just, look, you know, working and being able to practice with that uh, and uh, on a team to help uh, you know, oversee the morale uh, and everyday function of a group of 700 people, I think is a huge benefit, specifically academically. Uh, I think, you know, if you're doing this as an extracurricular, right, in this leadership position, sure, it's a lot of work, but I think there's probably a lot of learnings from it. So some things that we want to uh, move forward this semester, we do want to have a lot of one-on-ones. We do want to find out, you uh, you know, what each student's goals are, but also find out what are they learning in the classroom? How can they maybe apply it to the core cadets and vice versa? What skills are they learning uh, from their time as a leader in the core cadets and how, they, how can they apply that in the classroom? So we're really going to be focusing on that. Um, and then, then in the larger picture that the Edwards Leadership Development Program that Benita was talking about, that definitely will have an academic piece to it. I'm not exactly sure what that will be, but that's more of a holistic a uh, leadership program that's going to include all students on campus, the core cadets, as well as the folks that, that chose not to opt in. Um, and there will be academic support um, through there and there'll be leadership opportunities there. So I know that's kind of a general response, but I hope that answers your question some. Um, I'd also like to add that when your student is participating in, um, in these kinds of roles, Typically, it, these, these types of roles and, and engagements are called high impact practices. We call them HIPs. Um, and when they participate in this, like uh, in a leadership role, uh, or they participate in community service, they participate in club management, those kinds of things um, automatically impact your ability to um, do better academically. It, is it because you're hanging out with students uh, who are equally driven and therefore you you work off each other's uh, energy and and study habits and uh, or whether that just makes you more organized? These are all things uh, within your college experience that ultimately impact your academics. So keep that in mind, even if you are giving time away from actually studying from your books, um, these kinds of activities are helpful. They're, they're, that's why they're called high impact practices. Um, so Lori's still interested in finding out how a student gets put in 2D, let's say. Um, is it alphabetical? Is it... Uh, how how is how does that happen, uh, and what is the difference between Decky one to four, for example? It's just a number, um, and then when you belong to that number, it becomes uh, in different um, ways. If there are any challenges, if there are any um, fun activities going on, it's you know there's there may be some competition between the the divisions. But how they're put in those divisions, I don't know. Craig, do you know? 
I think it's just trying to keep the divisions equal numbers. So it's okay. it it that's all that matters to us is is okay. keeping them just sort of around the same amount of people in each division. Uh, as as V said, Benita said, uh, the difference between one and four is just a number. It's you're all deckies. Um, you just may be in one D instead of three D. And um, once you are in a division, you typically have um, loyalty to that division and then and that's where your buddies are made and um you know you you kind of fight for that division in in in, in a friendly comp competitive kind of way but it's also brings the whole campus and student together so yeah um joseph i'm gonna have to go into a special file to check if we have your photo or not so um, if I don't have it, I will email you tomorrow. Joseph. Okay. Uh, where can a student find out if he or she has opted in to be a cadet? Uh, if you are a parent or a family member of the student, please start with asking them, did they opt in or out? It would have had to be a decision. Um, you could email me at orientation at csum.edu with your student's name and I could check for you and respond. But always ask your student what, what they're doing and where they're at with these kinds of decisions. So please do reach out to me if your student is uh, not sure what, what was expected of them. Um, so it looks like we've got other topics coming up. Are you both good with me uh, kind of working through those? Okay, um, I dropped the link for application. It's not truly an application. It's an email prop, email that you need to send. So please go ahead and do that. I did put that in the link. What is needed for dorm room and what school supplies? So if you go on our website uh, and put in what to bring in the, in the, uh, the search field, it'll pop up with a PDF that will give you what to bring and what not to bring. School supplies are pretty limited, um, a good calculator. Uh, if your student is an engineer, most everything else is basic. Uh, your students don't need to start buying any books right now. Um, they, need to be, they need to meet their faculty. A lot of faculty go out of their way and try very hard to find free resources for students to get to the material that they're teaching. So your student might not need to buy $200 books for every class. So please do not jump ahead and do that. Let them meet their faculty and find out what's needed and which, the, which ones they need to buy. And Amazon or our bookstore, both are good places to start. Um, Please find that information. Uh, I've shared this document in a couple of emails, but um, I will I will put that link in again. Give me a second. Uh, where can we get access to this recording? Um, I've added that link as well in this chat. Um, let me let me find out. What is the link? or what to bring. What to bring can be found on this page. For families who have not yet joined Keel Holler Family Facebook page, I invite you to do that. Um, it is a closed group for parents and families, not for students. Um, so, or just any random uh, person who might be on Facebook. So it asks you to join the, the group. It asks you for a couple of questions, asks you for your student's name and their major. Please uh, include that. If you do not include that, then the group doesn't uh, accept those uh, those uh, requests. So please be sure to put both of those answers in. Um, and you can Google that, or I can give you where that um, information is or, or where you can find the page. Any other questions? Um, 
I can't hear you, Cynthia. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. You're okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. So I just wanted to uh, confirm. So, are all of the engineering students? Uh, are they all cadets? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Absolutely. No problem. So all engineers, maritime, um, maritime transportation students automatically belong to the core. It's part of their licensure requirement. Anyone else will have to opt into the core. Hunter, go ahead. Here, Irene. I got it. Hi, this is Irene, Hunter's mom. Um, quick question. Hello. In regards to when they check in on Saturday and you said they would be getting a time, is there a possibility? I know you said there's only like 28 seconds they check in, but will you have some students checking in like after the lunch hour? We're just asking because we'll be driving from out of state to drop him off. So just curious to know what the time frame is, like 7 to 12, or is there a buffer somewhere in there? So they, um, you will receive the email that says, let's say 8.15 is your check-in time. Um, go ahead and respond to that email and let them know that you're driving in and you you will not get here until 1.30. Can they please adjust you into that time slot? And you will receive a response. Um, we, will, we do everything that we humanly can uh, to make those uh, accommodations. So once you know your time and it is indeed doesn't work with your travel, uh, please respond back to that email. Feel free to include me uh, either at orientation at csum.edu or my regular email, which is vdillon at csum.edu so that uh, if I need to follow up, I'm happy to do that. So don't feel like you absolutely don't have an option. No, no problem. I was just wondering if the latest check-in, do you guys go past 12? Because I know there's like a little ceremony prior to that. So if you say, oh yeah, the latest one's at 12, then we know, okay, we'll either get there the night before. But if if that's not known, I understand there's a lot going on. I just figured there might be a range between like seven and 12. That's Seven all. and two. It's not seven and 12. Oh. It goes till two and the oh. topic ceremonies doesn't start till 3.30. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, hi, this is um, Mike, uh, Roman Chancerulo's father. I just got a quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Roman was accepted mechanical engineering, but he's not 100% sure if he wants to pursue that. What are What's his timeline if he wants to adjust his major, like to marine, marine transportation, for example, or whatever, business uh, administration? He needs to do that as quickly as possible please uh, contact admissions right away and see what they can do it. The sooner you do it, the, the better, because again, block registration fees, uh, getting you in the right spot, in the right division. Um, so I would recommend you get in touch with uh, with admissions right away. Or, or, or what about this? What if he does it after a semester realize, yeah, mechanical engineering is not for me. How difficult is the change? It's not. It's not difficult to to change. The difference is that, that these programs are very specific. And so if you've done your first semester, first semester is pretty easy. It's more general ed. So not as harmful in terms of time. But um, it, if you want to switch in spring, you can. Uh, you'll just add time to your uh, total graduation time so you might not finish in four years you might have to go to a fifth year understood but you okay. can change thank you yeah of course um so is there any required leadership things other than watching the boat that should that should be ready for uh so leadership is a requirement in the sense that it's built into the core structure jp um and um whatever uh, Jason and Craig decide to do in terms of the leadership program, you there might be an expectation for you to attend. There you are. I, I For a minute, I lost Jason and Craig. So did you want to respond to that question? 
You know, I, I think, I mean, just the, the very basic level, uh, you know, attending formation, right? Making sure that you have the proper uniform on and you're wearing it correctly. Uh, making sure that you're meeting the grooming standards and all of this stuff is going to be in the rules and regulations which you'll have access to here in the uh, near future and your student will have access to via canvas but just like Benita said there's going to be uh, a lot of different leadership opportunities and different things that we do there may be uh divisional meetings uh where the, the division calls a meeting where everybody in that division has to attend right so a lot of our uh, core leadership our student leaders uh some of their responsibilities is to create uh, that sense of belonging and really help foster that by uh, providing uh, team activities and different things. So some of that stuff may be required. Um, it's just going to be all all dependent on uh, division and what we're doing at that time. So, um, Thank you, Jason. Um, so, Christina, I have to apologize. The The financial aid meeting has been uploaded, but the person who uh, has uploaded it um, Made the made the assumption that it was the third um, recording. Therefore, it must have been sense of belonging. She doesn't know that I didn't make the third one. Um, so the one that says sense of belonging is truly financial aid. I will have that title changed uh, tomorrow, Christina. So if you click on the third recording in um, uh, on this link, I'll share it again. Um, that is the financial aid one. So you can uh, take a look at it. Also, are there un uniforms, uniform items that need to be purchased by us? So all uniforms are part of the uh, fee schedule and it's already handled and your student should have given us sizes and uh, it's all part of the package, your, your financial package. So there's nothing additional that you need to buy. Um, Oh, on the topic of uniforms on weekends, is it the same seven to four dining hall rule or can can I wear casual clothes? Jason? Or... Where would you take this one? Uh, on the weekends, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can wear casual clothes. I think it's Monday yeah. through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You must be in uniform. And there's a caveat to that. You must be in uniform on lower campus where there are classrooms and offices and such. You don't have to be in uniform during those times when you're in your res halls or up in the uh, in uh, PIAC or up on Bodner. So in in space in certain spaces. Um, yeah. Thank you. Of Very course. Right. I'll take these last two questions and then we're gonna um, move move on for the evening. Um, I, before I read the last two questions, just remember next week, it is not a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. It's a Monday, Tuesday schedule. So we will see you um, on Thursday first this, this week, and then we'll see you next week, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, please uh, keep that in mind. Last question, please confirm when classes are assigned, students will receive an email and it's not waiting in their student portal. Um, both will happen. It'll be in their student portal and they will receive an email is my understanding, Lisa, but have your students stay on top of the portal as well as their email box. Uh, when do we start to enroll in classes? Uh, Michael, as I explained, you will not, your student will not need to enroll in classes this semester. All students are block registered and they will be put in classes that they have, um, they might be able to adjust, they will be able to adjust when they are on campus if they don't like the time or they wanna switch one class for another that's on their roadmap. So um, they'll have some flexibility, but the classes will be picked and registered for them. Um, is formation every day? Malcolm wants to know. So Jason or Craig? I will say uh, for this last year, it was Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, here on campus. Um, this year coming up, we're looking at something very similar. We're we're finalizing those details right now, but it's not it's not every day. No, um, definitely not every day. Now, when you do go out on the ship, uh, if you are a cadet that will be going out on the ship, you will be having formation every day. So it's a little bit different. Uh, but just just imagine the formation here is kind of preparing you for your time when you're on the ship. Um, so yeah. All right, it's six thirty-five and. Um... 
I want to end on time today um, or just shortly after. Thank you, Jason and Craig, for joining us and extending your work day into 6.35. Um, and I want to thank all the parents, as I always do. Without your partnership, success for your students is going to be more challenging <laughs> than it already is. So thank you. And uh, we will post this recording in two to three days, and I will change the topic uh, the the title of the last one that's updated. I um, hope you this was helpful and we'll see you next time on Thursday with Res Life. Yay. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye guys. <laughs>